Welcome to my shop. My name is Chris with Custom Creative Carvings. This is my debut YouTube woodworking video. I am relatively new to woodworking and brand new to YouTube. So as of yet, other than my wife, I don't have any sponsors. So I'm going to share some stuff with you today, but it's stuff that I learned or I picked up. I want to talk about something that I was told, something that I figured out, and something that I found. So I'm talking about cross-cut sleds today for the table saw. A lot of people have them. A lot of people have videos out there. I've learned a lot from all the videos I've watched. So I went down to Woodcraft of Salt Lake City to pick up every single bell and whistle you can imagine for a cross-cut sled. I wanted it all. And so I started talking to one of the, the sales guys there and it turns out they're not there to sell because he said, I'll give you some advice and take it for what it's worth because it's free. He said, start simple, figure out how to do it and what you like and what you need and then build up. And so that's what I did. As you can see, my first sled here is a very basic, simple and expensive sled but I learned some stuff while I was doing it. One thing I figured out is why everybody does long rails on the front. I always saw the front job, or the job of the front was to keep the gap of, to, as the kerf, keep the boards from coming apart. What I learned after making a small one and putting two screws in it is that when you've got two screws here and two screws here, and you go to adjust this, angle you undo this screw and then put another screw in these two screws allow it to pivot this way which actually changes the kerf it also changes the alignment between these two runners so lesson learned this needs more screws so what did i do i went through and put four screws in still wasn't enough i still had these shifting and creating it difficulties for me to even get it in the runners let alone slide it so my takeaway when i do my next upgrade is to extend this maybe not the full length but a lot longer and do a lot more screws so this holds it stable when we go from two screws on this end just to one screw on this end so we can adjust this now i was able to correct it and get it to work it took me a lot longer than it should have but i got it and then i ended up putting six screws here in the back when I got everything squared up so it doesn't rely on this front. This front one's job is just to keep this from pulling apart. After I got it put together, I did need to get it square though. And there is a five cut method out there that is very effective for getting that square. And as I was going back to find one of the many YouTube videos that showed me how to do that, I actually scrolled past the YouTube videos and looked to see if I could find a calculator. And what I found was windridgewoodcrafts.com has a calculator. I will put a link to their website in the description below, but it has a calculator where you put in what your width up here on the last cut is, what your width is down here on the last cut is, what the length of the cut piece is, and what the pivot length is between the two screws you've got. You hit enter and it gives you a number. 0, 0.00 whatever, and that represents how far you've got to move it. And it says if your pivot's on the right or left, you've got to move it forward or back based on if it's a positive or negative. So first thing I learned or was told, start simple. Build up after you get used to it. Second one I figured out is more screws in the front. And what I found was wood, sorry, wind, river, wood, once again, this should be a bloopers reel, but I'm not that high tech yet. It's windridgewoodcrafts.com has a very easy to use calculator. A couple of things I used to help me do this was after I got that calculator, I needed to make that micro adjustment. For six bucks at my local tool shop, I just picked up some OE tools, master feeler gauge, 26 blades. These are available online everywhere i supported a local shop and it was only six bucks made it so much easier just to put that spacer in and slide it to that clamp very easy 
while I was at Woodcraft, I did pick something up. They couldn't talk me out of picking up a Mac Make It Snappy Tools countersink set. This is my first countersink set. I've always just had a separate drill bit and a separate countersink. When it's the drill bit and countersink in one, it made doing all these screws down here in the bottom so much easier. So, great set of tools. Really like that. After I got it all put together, I took some Johnson's paste wax that I picked up down at Home Depot, put that on the bottom of the sled, put that on the top of the tabletop. And despite the fact this is a very old sled or old table and a relatively new sled, it slides like butter. So thank you for joining for me, me for my debut video. I don't have a lot of followers as of now. I think I'm still under 10. So if you wouldn't mind hitting the subscribe button, I would appreciate it. Another thing I would appreciate even more is what can I do in future videos to make this a more enjoyable experience. If you want to hit that notification button, I am going to try and do more tips, tricks as I go forward. I am setting up my shop, and so I'm going to talk about my dust collection system. I'm going to talk about the different tools I've got. One of those tools being a nice big CNC machine that I have a lot of fun with. But for now, this is where we're starting my very first YouTube woodworking video. Thank you, and have a great day.